Which what? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually have one. That is fantastic. Maybe you can actually say some nice things about it. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Because I really like that. We never use it, sadly, though. Oh, it's very good. It's very good. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the 500th episode of Chef AJ Live. I am so happy you are here. I cannot believe that just a little over a year ago, on March 20th, 2020, I started doing a little show just to give a sense of community during the pandemic and that people actually watch it and like it. And I've had some absolutely amazing guests on. And before I introduce today's amazing guest, who's been on the show before, and he's going to create a delicious and healthy meal in honor of Cinco de Mayo, I just want to tell you that today we are giving away two free Nutra Milk machines. For my 500th episode, I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could give away a prize for $500? Well, that's the Nutra Milk machine. And the company not only generously offered to give one away, but they're giving two away. So if you don't win today on the show right now, at one o'clock, we have a bonus show with Dr. Ron Weiss, where you'll have another chance. I will tell you in a moment how to win, but you must be watching live and you must stay till the end and you must participate in the chat. And by the chat, I mean YouTube. Unfortunately, we can't see your comments on Facebook. So if you want to win, hop on over to YouTube. I love the Nutri Milk Machine. A lot of people say it's so expensive, but it's five machines at once because it can replace your high power blender. It can replace your champion juicer that I used to use to make ice cream. It has already replaced my Cuisinart because it's a much better food processor. Don't believe me, watch today's Weight Loss Wednesday and you can see that recipes that would took five minutes, I can do in like 30 seconds in the Nutri Milk. It can, let's see, blender, food processor, it can be a juicer, it can make broth in it, but it's really for making plant milk. And a lot of people say, oh, I got this other machine and it was so much cheaper. Yeah, that's because you're not making plant milk, you're making plant water. Because what those machines that are very inexpensive do is you get rid of the most nutritious part of the nut or the seed or the grain, the pulp and the fiber, and then you have waste. This machine has zero waste. And it turns out that today's chef has one too. I did not know that. So let's welcome him to the show. He is the co-owner of a wonderful restaurant. If you live anywhere in Los Angeles or visit, you must check out Sun Cafe. He's so versatile because he can do raw, he can do cooked. He works for the Dean Ornish program. He knows how to do oil-free. And he is just a wonderful person and a wonderful chef. He's been vegan, I think, as long as I. His name is Chef Ron Russell, and he's gonna be making cauliflower tacos and apple pie. Please welcome back, Chef Ron. It's so nice to see you on this special day. Hi, Chef Beijing. You know, Ron, we didn't know that you were going to be the 500th episode. We booked you like four months ago. So congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm very honored. We'll probably have a lot of people watching today because they have a chance to win the Nutra Milk. And you know, oh, I learned about go. the machine from a guest that's going to be on very soon. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of John Kohler. He's the juicer guy. And he did a really fair, unbiased video comparing machines. And that's why I went with it. So oh. um, oops, I just knocked my bell over. So anyway, I can't wait to see what you have to make. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, I have been uh, veg vegan for 44 years. I have not had any animal except milk uh, in 44 years. I did milk for about 25 uh, years uh, into my vegetarian world, and then I've been vegan for about 20 now. So uh, back when there were virtually no restaurants available, so uh, things have come a long way, and Sun Cafe, uh, organic, we're an all organic restaurant. Uh, we've been around for 12 years now, believe it or not, hard to believe. Um, and my, my partner, Rebecca Smith, uh, uh, we've, we've uh, survived coronavirus and we're uh, happy to say that things are opening up a lot now um, since the first of the year and we're supposed to be fully open uh, June 15th. I mean, we, we have both inside and outside dining, but there's no restrictions after June 15th. So that's incredible. So you'll probably be able to start teaching your classes again because you have fabulous yeah. classes. You used to offer them every single Saturday and then people can also take them virtually. Yes. Yeah, so, well, I haven't been doing them virtually. It just, it just isn't quite the same. I tried it a couple of times, but uh, uh, anyway, yeah, I've done over 400 classes. And um, so we'll get back on the road to that uh, probably in June. And um, yeah, we're kind of an interesting vegan restaurant. We we make most everything from scratch. We make all our own, we make our own cheeses and our own chorizo and our own uh, dressings and so on and so forth. So uh, it's uh, got a real fresh taste to it. 
and we we try and do things that always have a twist to it so we don't try and do um, uh, you know just basic things we try and make you know it interesting we'll do um, crossover of different cuisines and so on and so forth uh, so we always try and keep it interesting uh, but today I am going to make um, some tacos probably not very traditional but uh, there's they're super tasty, very healthy for you as well. Um, and that's what I'm big on. Uh, I love uh, healthy, but really flavorful food. And um, kind of the, the, the idea is with this class uh, is to let the ingredients kind of speak for themselves. Now, that being said, you know, I'm, I'm adding a lot, lots of different uh, herbs and spices, but uh, I think we don't give enough, it seems like in the vegan world, there's so much trying to imitate something. And I think it's good to go with um, the, the flavors of what we have in the vegetable kingdom. So uh, the apple pie is gonna be, you know, let the apple pies, the apples speak for themselves, um, you know, and the mushrooms and the cauliflower in the tacos. Um, yes, we're adding seasoning, but uh, don't try and make it into something different. Um, you can have wonderful, amazing flavors without that. So that's kind of where I'm coming from today. Uh, so this apple pie I've been making now for over 10 years, it's actually a, um, a very simple apple pie. And I think it's way more flavorful than a traditional apple pie. Uh, when you cook most things, um, you actually often reduce the flavors. So with apples, when you cook them, I don't think they're as flavorful. So I'm leaving them raw and um, uh, you can really get a lot of uh, that natural apple sweetness out of them without that. And so you don't have to add sugar or anything to uh, this recipe uh, and, and no oil as well. So um, I'm, my favorite apple is Fuji. Um, I think it's a nice cross between sweet and tart. And um, I like the texture of the Fuji as well. So that's the apple I'm using. Um, it calls for, I think, what, uh, five, six apples. It also depends on the size. These happen to be really big, so I may not need six. Um, and I'll show you first um, how I uh, cut an apple. I mean, you can do it however you want. You, you know, there's those cores that you can take out the center core, um, but, for me, I just cut along the core with the first slice, and then I just put it over so it's a flat surface, because one of the things that's dangerous, I see people do all the time, they're cutting round fruit and vegetables, and a moving object is not a great way to be cutting because you're gonna cut yourself that way. So the first slice of any fruit or vegetable, I try and make it uh, into a flat surface, so now it's not going to move on me. And then I just see where the core is, and I just keep turning it, and I cut it, and now I've got my core out, and I've got my apple. Now, we're going to just be um, uh, chopping it in a food processor, so uh, we need to cut it a little smaller than, you know, th this big a piece. Uh, now, you can um, peel it, but I find it works just as well without peeling it. So, uh, and there's a lot of nutrition in the, uh, in the peel as well. So I'm just gonna do this with a couple of apples. So the first slice you have to deal with it being round but after that. Ron, have you ever had something called the Envy Apple? I have not. It's really good. It's like the envy of all apples. <laughs> the envy of apples, okay. Uh, the, all the other apples are jealous, are they? It's just really, really delicious. Nice. Okay. Now, Fuji worked pretty great for me. Um, always been my favorite apple. Um, and so basically we're gonna create more or less like a chunky applesauce with this is what's gonna happen. Now, um, I'm not going to eat, boy, we, these apples are super big because we've got the whole 
process are full with just uh, three apples here. So, okay, so um, the first thing is you don't wanna puree it all the way down into a liquid. You wanna keep it chunky. Um, so you're gonna pulse it. So I'm just gonna show you here. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's still pretty chunky. Um, and that's all you need. And then we're gonna mix in a couple of things. Uh, the first thing we're gonna mix in is uh, a little lemon juice. And uh, that just is a natural preservative to keep the apple uh, from browning too quickly. And then we're also gonna add a little bit of cinnamon and actually a little extra cinnamon. I'm just gonna pulse that through, just gonna take a couple of quick pulses. Okay, so. Oh, let me get one more bowl. I'll be right back. Wait, while you're there, I, guys, Facebook viewers, if you go to Sh Chef AJ, that's the only way you can win. I'm sorry, we can't see your comments in the chat. And it, it, it's live right now. If you just go to Chef AJ on YouTube, I can post the link for you because I'm about to ask what we, the question, what you have to type to win. We have representatives from Nutra Milk watching. They're going to select the winner to take the pressure off me. And Nutra Milk has generously offered a $50 discount to anyone that wants to purchase the machine, which I'll also put in the chat and the show notes. But I'm just waiting for the YouTube, uh, Facebook people to hop on over. You see, you can see my comments, you guys, in Facebook, but we can't see yours. It's the way the technology works. So we would prefer, in general, to, but especially today, if you want to win. Oh, Robin says, I if AJ saved our life, thank you. And you have a second chance. If you don't win in this show, we have another guest named Ron, Dr. Ron Weiss coming back at 1 p.m. Ron, do you have any uh, specials today at the restaurant in honor of Cinco de Mayo? Um, we just have our normal taco specials. Uh, we, we have four different kinds, well, five different kinds of tacos. We have lettuce raw tacos with our own house chorizo. Uh, we also have a mushroom taco, a potato taco with chipotle, um, cream. We have um, uh, a, 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 a tempeh a bacon taco uh, with nacho cheese and um, oh yeah, jackfruit, barbecue jackfruit taco. So anyway, those are all around. Um, uh, one other thing I'm going to add in here is a little bit of psyllium. Uh, psyllium, if you're not familiar with it, is great for digestion, digestive issues both uh, constipation and diarrhea it works for. Um, and it basically absorbs moisture. And so this will help solidify the apples just a little bit um, because they are, you know, fairly moist. Another thing, if you like it even drier, is you can pull the apples out a little bit and kind of press out some of the juice uh, and that'll make it a little drier and easier to cut. Uh, but you don't have to. So I'm just gonna... Okay. Now, one thing I did, which probably was not ideal, but I, I made the mixture before I made the, um, uh, the, uh, the crust, not a big deal, you just put this aside, but you gotta learn to roll with the punches when you're making stuff. Okay. So, um, so now we're gonna make the crust. And for that, I've got just oats, uh, just quick oats or even just regular oats. And I just toasted them in uh, an oven briefly, maybe about five, seven minutes uh, on low heat, 350. And you just get them toasted a little bit. And then uh, we've got, again, a little bit of cinnamon and uh, and then we're gonna puree this down. 
so that it's a little more flower like you don't have to go all the way to completely flower but you don't want the big pieces of um of oats and then we're going to add some dates uh to help push it together. So uh, dates are a super way to uh, sweeten. Uh, they're very healthy for you. They're full of nutrients and they don't spike blood sugar and so on. So just to show you, you know, it's, it's pretty well blended down. It doesn't take long. And then with dates, one of the secrets is you don't want to um, uh, add it all at once, because if you do, you'll just have this big clump of dates going around. Now I'm using date paste, it's just ground dates. Um, you can get it uh, uh, often at Middle Eastern stores or um, you can get it on Amazon like everything else. Um, and you just want to do little pieces at a time so uh, that it doesn't all stick together. And you wanna keep the food processor running so that it keeps blending it together. Do you still have your raw nachos on the menu? Pardon? Do you still have the raw nachos on the menu? Uh, we do, yes. We have raw nachos. Uh, instead of regular chips for that, we use jicama slices because they're crunchy. Um, and so, you know, it's no fat that way or low fat. Uh, uh, yeah, we make our own nacho cheese uh, out of potatoes and sunflower seeds. We have... Uh, uh, like I said, our own chorizo that's also made out of sunflower seeds and vegetables. And uh, so all of those are available. Um, so uh, for this, you can spray your pan a little bit just to make sure it doesn't stick. It'd probably be okay without it, but just a little olive oil spray doesn't even add a single gram of fat. And here's what you end up with is this mix of the dates and the oats. And when you push it together, it sticks because of the dates. So we're just going to push this together and start to push it up the side of the, um, of the pie pan. Uh, like a nine inch pie pan is probably best or smaller. And as you press, that's going to keep it in place because the dates are going to hold it together. Okay, so there's our, I, I would normally do a little more pressing, but for, I, it's probably not too exciting me watching me press uh, oats and dates together. So then we've got our apples. I'm going to add in our apples. Uh, Ron, there's a question from TS. In your classes, do you give ideas for substitutions when your recipes use nuts? Uh, uh, usually I, I try and find an alternative. Yes, I do. Um, and um, I try and keep most of my classes low fat these days. I do use nuts in some of my classes, but not nearly as much as I used to. So uh, so yes, is the answer. Uh, so the other thing is, I'm kind of running wild here today. Uh, normally, uh, I'd mix in the raisins into the, the mixture, but we'll just put those on top and then press them down. The raisins obviously give a natural sweetness. Also, it gives a little texture, which I think the pie needs sometimes. So I like to add the raisins. And I'm just using uh, everything here is organic. And then I'm just going to press them into the, the mix there. Okay. 
And then the final thing you want to do, or the second to final thing, is you want to have uh, actual apple slices on it. I think this adds a lot of visual interest as well as it gives another textural element. So you just cut some thin slices and then you go around them all the, uh, the half moons facing the same direction. And then the final thing you're gonna do is add just a little bit of cinnamon onto those apples. So that's what you've got so far. And then we're just gonna put a little bit of cinnamon, hopefully. I need just a little more cinnamon. Sorry, let me grab some cinnamon real quick. You have a favorite cinnamon? Like there's different ones like cassia and uh, Saigon and things like that. Yeah, I, I'm uh, pretty basic uh, when it comes to cinnamon. Uh, just any cinnamon will do. Um, some of the other ones, some of the newer ones I feel are a little too much. So I guess I like just traditional cinnamon. So just, this is called dusting. Um, I use this a lot in plating where you use an herb or spice. You grab a little pinch with your fingers and you go back and forth and you dust either the top of the dish or on a plate that you're plating, you put a, that around and it gives a nice little texture to the plate and uh, makes you know everything look a little more interesting. So there is your apple pie. Pretty basic, pretty simple, 15, 20 minutes, you can make it, uh, but it's really good. You put it in the fridge for, you know, half an hour or so, and then you can dig in. Um, and it'll slice pretty well uh, with the dates and the oats. Um, and you've got no fat, uh, you've got no added sugar, you just have natural sugars. So it's a uh, pretty darn tasty dish. That looks beautiful, uh, okay. and it's great for those of us that live in very warm climates that we don't have to turn our oven on. Exactly, for sure. Yeah, I'd love to hear yeah. more about your work with the Ornish program, and I also would love to know how you make those jicama chips, what machine you use to do that. But first, I want everyone to know that the contest will begin right now. We have representatives from Nutramilk watching and monitoring the chat. You do need to stay until the end because if we don't have your email or phone number, we can't contact you to tell you that you won. You must live in the United States or Canada. If you do not win this episode, come back at 1 p.m. with the show with Dr. Ron Weiss for a second chat. And so many people in the chat are thanking Nutramilk for being so generous and offering not just one, but two machines. I'm posting three questions in the chat. You need to answer them. You don't have to answer them quickly. You just have to answer them thoughtfully. You'll have till the end of the show. And you must be on YouTube for us to see the comment. And the questions are, why do you want to win a Nutramilk machine? What would you do with it? And most importantly, what would it mean to you in terms of your health? Question is posted in the chat. Take your time to answer. And Chef Ron is going to do another wonderful recipe using one of my very favorite and overlooked vegetables, cauliflower. <laughs> cauliflower, I don't know if it's as low overlooked as it used to be. It seems like it's popping up everywhere now. Certainly cauliflower pizza crust. Um, you're seeing all sorts of different ways of using cauliflower, I feel, lately. Uh, I think it was neglected up in the last couple of years. Uh, kale has certainly won the spotlight. Uh, kale, um, I feel, has uh, got the best PR firm out there because you hear about kale all the time. And where's the PR firm for chard and, and collard greens? And there's all sorts of amazing greens, uh, parsley, um, uh, speaking of greens, I think it's the most important thing you eat in a day is your leafy greens, your dark leafy greens. Um, now I didn't, probably should have, but I didn't. In the, uh, the tacos, you can easily add, you know, a handful of spinach or chard or something and uh, get in your greens, which is typically what I do in my own personal life. I try and eat at least a pound of leafy greens a day. Uh, if you're not aware how much that is. If you go to Trader Joe's much, you get the, the pre-washed spinach. It's three of those bags a day. That's my minimum greens requirement. So the way I get it down is almost always have a big salad. I almost always uh, have a green smoothie where I put all sorts of things in. 
like bok choy and kale and chard and uh, parsley. And then I make it tasty with fruit. So I'll add, you know, some berries, blueberries, strawberries, whatever I happen to have, uh, maybe a banana uh, to make it creamy. And, uh, and then I use greens in, in almost anything I make, I try and throw in a handful of greens. So I make a stir fry or a casserole or enchiladas. And you can put in what I call the neutral greens easily. Uh, neutral greens are those that don't have a lot of flavor, um, uh, but tons of nutrients. So spinach, kale, chard, uh, uh, bok choy, um, uh, are all in the neutral greens category. The, the other kind of greens are the bitter greens, I feel. So that's like dandelion greens, uh, carrot tops, uh, uh, those kinds of things that are really strong and uh, sometimes a little bit hard to get down. So I concentrate on the, on the neutral ones. Uh, chard is probably my favorite. I love chard, I love the way it looks. I think it's a beautiful vegetable. Um, now my idea of cook, if you're going to cook, I use a lot of raw, but if you're going to cook greens, um, don't do it the Southern way. Southern way is you put the, the collard greens and the kale and the chard uh, in a pot for an hour and a half, turn them brown, add a pound of bacon fat, and that's their idea of eating healthy. Um, so my idea is you cook greens only until they wilt. That's how long you cook greens. So spinach, 45 seconds is how long I cook spinach. Uh, chard and kale, uh, maybe about two minutes. It's, you know, they're a little thicker. So uh, to get them to wilt, I cook them about two minutes. Uh, so very short cooking on greens. Um, did you want me to go into a little bit about uh, Dr. Ornish? I would love that, but it, it, unless it's a chef's secret, how do you make the jicama chips? Because oh, I, 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 I know that they have jicama tortillas, now you can buy them at Sprouts and Trader right, Joe's right. and Whole Foods, but they're quite expensive. And I'm just curious uh, how you do that. Well, we don't do anything too fancy. What, uh, so the way we do it is you peel the jicama. Uh, I don't use a peeler. I find it's too difficult on jicama. So again, I use a knife. I just angle the knife at the, the, you know, the curve of the jicama and cut the skin off that way. I find that's easiest. Now I've got a white piece of jicama um, and then we use a mandolin. So uh, if you're not familiar with a mandolin, it's a, a little platform. I'm sure you've seen them and there's a blade in the middle that's on a diagonal and you can adjust the blade thickness. So we, we go for about a, um, an eighth of an inch, I would guess, pretty thin. And we just, with the, the, the benefit of the mandolin is as you put your uh, vegetable or fruit over it, you get the same thickness slice every time. And so we get this, you know, same thickness. Now, one of the secrets of the mandolin, because it's the most dangerous piece of equipment in your kitchen. So we even at the restaurant require all chefs to wear what's called a Kevlar glove, just like armor body armor, uh, you have to wear a Kevlar glove to use the, the uh, mandolin. Uh, you can get a Kevlar glove on Amazon for uh, like $10 for two. Uh, it's the best investment you'll make in a kitchen. Uh, you know, also it can keep you from cutting yourself with a knife if you're not overly comfortable with the knife. Uh, it's a great protective gear. And uh, so we just cut them really thin and just use them natural. That's amazing. And I appreciate that you talked about the glove because Chef Ron, I have so many chefs on this show that will not use a mandolin glove. And, it, and it, I don't like that because then other people think it's okay to do that. Yeah. Now, I mean, as skilled and, and you know, uh, as, as long as some of my cooks have been chefs, you can still, you know, hit a piece in, in a piece of uh, fruit or vegetable, you know, uh, maybe you hit a seed in an apple or something and it, and it jerks your hand and, you know, then you've got a big cut. So, uh, you know, for five bucks, it's the greatest protection. And like I said, I don't let anybody use a mandolin without it. Um, it's just too, it's just an open blade. It's just, you know, waiting for problems to happen. So. Well, I appreciate that because um, even my good friend, Chef Bravo, the, these guys at True North, I, I, it drives me crazy. They don't use the glove. And I just think like one day they're going to get a thumb slice. Yeah, off. no, I, I've, 
you know, I've seen too many accidents in kitchens and um, it's not uh, worth all it for, for major safety. Um, uh, speaking of which, um, uh, real quickly, uh, the knife I use is a Santoku. It's like a chef's knife. It's a nice wide blade. You want a nice wide blade when you cut. Uh, but uh, chef's knives for me are too long. They're like an extra three inches and I find they're getting in the way. And so I like a, a more compact knife. Um, with the right hand, if you're right-handed, you, you press at the top of the blade here and you curl your three fingers. Uh, so you're not gonna cut your right hand. The most common way you cut yourself is with your left hand of it, hand that's holding things. So there's two things I do with that. One of which you can wear a Kevlar glove on your left hand and be protected that way. Um, not a bad idea. Um, but also uh, when I cut, um, I just to show you here, I use my index finger to guide the blade to, to keep it steady because if you're trying to do it without steadying it, your, your hand will waver some. With this, you have a very precise uh, emotion. And then I curl the rest of my fingers and my thumb way away. So I don't do this. I see some chefs cutting where their fingers are right under the blade. And if you miss by a hundredth of an inch, you're gonna cut yourself. So I like to curl everything back. Now, if I miss even by an inch, I'm not gonna cut myself. Um, so uh, that's one of my secrets. Uh, 12 years, I haven't cut myself in the kitchen. So this will be the day though, because I said that, but anyway. Um, so I'm going to cut up the mushrooms and then I'm going to cut up the cauliflower and then we're just going to saute them. And uh, I'm not going to add oil, but I am going to spray the pan again with uh, olive oil spray or any, any uh, spray. Uh, usually if you just spray for a, a second, uh, it doesn't even add a single gram of fat. So um, also I'm using a cast iron, which tends to be very nonstick, or I also like um, some of the new, uh, like porcelain pans are great, they don't stick. Uh, so uh, those are uh, my favorites. Let me turn this on. All right. So um, this is an induction burner, in case you're wondering. Um, it, it cooks using magnetism. Don't ask me how, but um, it gets hot very fast compared to a coil um, uh, uh, electric stove top. Um, and they're also portable, which makes it ideal for this situation. Um, and uh, it's very precise, which is uh, nice. So we've got the, the mushrooms. I'm just gonna toss those in. And I'm using cremini. So you can use whatever you happen to have. Uh, one of my favorites for a meaty texture is shiitake mushrooms. I feel like they're the meatiest of the mushrooms. Um, they have a nice chew to them. Uh, they also have a great flavor. And then the cauliflower, I'm just taking floral, flower uh, florets or whatever and cutting them into thin little pieces. Did you get involved with Dr. Ornish? That is so cool. And learning what you learned from working with him, did it change anything in your own personal diet or how you execute recipes at a restaurant? Well, uh, in case you don't know who Dr. Ornish is, he's a groundbreaking cardiologist who started treating uh, patients in the 80s using diet to reverse heart disease. And of course, doctors were very open to this and, and praised him. No, they didn't. They, they said he was a quack. Like, how dare you not give medicine to your patients? The problem is he was so successful that he couldn't be ignored forever. And now he has a clinic at UCLA Medical Center, one of the most prestigious medical centers in America, in fact, the world. And he has just started opening up clinics all over the U.S., uh, treating um, heart disease with diet because heart disease is mostly a dietary problem. It's, it's uh, uh, 
according to doctor, another great doctor, um, Dr. Michael Greger uh, of nutritionfacts.org says that the average person starts to get heart disease, are you ready for this? At age nine in America. That's how soon we start to show signs of heart disease, age nine, because we eat all this meat in America and it scars the arteries and then it starts to build plaques. And so the average person by age 25 has heart disease, hardening of the arteries. Now it doesn't affect them usually at that young age yet because it's not so blocked that you can't function, but you have heart disease if you eat a lot of meat in America. So, um, so at any rate, uh, Dr. Ornish uh, started treating um, people um, uh, using a uh, diet and the diet is a vegan low fat diet. And um, uh, uh, as far as how I got involved with him, um, I think one of his nurses actually ate at our restaurant and saw that we did some healthier stuff than a lot of vegan restaurants and approached us to work with his patients. So now we feed um, his patients uh, typically three, four meals a week. Um, and uh, some of the, he sends his uh, patients to my classes. And uh, so we work uh, pretty closely uh, with his nurses and um, that's how we got involved with him. And did it change my diet? Quite frankly, not too much. He influenced me in the eighties, uh, but I've been eating pretty healthy for quite a while. I, I keep trying to get healthier all the time. Uh, and I do change my diet often a little bit here and there uh, to try and you know eat healthier. Um, uh, but uh, I think he's one of the, you know the real groundbreaking doctors at understanding that you know it's not just medicine that can cure someone. I mean it seems ridiculous to have to say that, but um, that's not been the, the, the history of of American medical, uh, we've, we've gone to, you know, like you have to give uh, prescriptions uh, to heal people. And quite frankly, most prescriptions don't heal you. They, they uh, deal with your symptoms rather than curing what the underlying cause is. So there's a whole new school of medicine called um, lifestyle medicine, and it's a recognized field now and a lot, all of the, of the people I'm, I'm huge fans of, Dr. Greger and Ornish and um, uh, Dr. Esselstein and all these wonderful doctors um, uh, are all a part of that. So now we're gonna add um, some seasoning here. So I'm adding fresh garlic just uh, uh, that's been uh, minced. Um, I just realized I don't have a spoon. Oh, I'll have a spoon here. Um, then I'm going to add some cumin, which is probably one of the most common things, uh, spices you're going to find in Mexican food. And then um, oregano. A little onion powder. You could add fresh onion too, uh, which we will do as well. And then a little pap smoked paprika to give it that's, some flavor. That's my, that's my all-time favorite spice. Yeah. Uh, real quick on cutting an onion. So we've got again a round vegetable. So I'm going to do one slice right down the middle to get the flat surfaces. And then I'm going to cut off the ends, which are like too tough to eat. Peel away the top layer. And now I can either do onion slices. If I go like this, it creates onion slices. Or if I want to dice it, what I do is I cut almost to the edge without going all the way through, one through the middle. And now when I cut, I create nice, precise dicing. And it holds together for me as I dice. So I'm going to add some onion. Turn that around. got no moisture in here yet, so I'm going to add a little bit of uh, lemon juice or lime juice, either one, whatever you like most, and just a little bit of water to steam it up a little bit. Okay, 
grab a plate. Um, and I've got some uh, tortillas here. Once it's mostly cooked, I mean, corn tortillas, you typically have to add a little heat to, to get them a little more pliable. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna put them over the vegetables because the vegetables are gonna go in it anyway. I'm big on not creating extra pans in the kitchen. Uh, I see cooks that have, you know, three different pans working and then they mix it all together anyway at the end. I look for ways, can I mix it together without, you know, creating a bunch of extra pans? So that's one of my little pet peeves. Okay, still needs uh, another minute here. Have a little more moisture. I'm also gonna add in some cilantro. Um, I hope you're not one of those uh, that has to deal with uh, cilantro tasting like soap. There's something no, I, like 7% of people yeah, uh, cilantro I, tastes like soap. But how do they know what, this is what I always wondered, how do they know what soap tastes like unless they got their mouths washed out with soap <laughs> when they were a little kid? Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Cilantro is one of those things people either love or don't love. Right. Uh, supposedly what happened was um, it's mostly an Eastern European phenomenon. And the, the theory is that there was a, a vegetable that tasted like cilantro. It wasn't cilantro, but it tasted like cilantro that was poisonous in Eastern Europe. And so the people developed a dislike of cilantro to protect themselves from this poisonous plant uh, so that they wouldn't you know, accidentally eat it. And, and so um, that's supposedly how this um, group of people you know, that cilantro tastes so bad to uh, what's going on. That's what I've heard. Have you got a chance to meet, meet Dr. Ornish? I have not officially met Dr. Ornish, uh, believe it or not. I've um, worked with them now for you know, like three or four years. Um, I've been to uh, some of the ex patients still get together, like sometimes a hundred will meet uh, because, you know, it's kind of a changing of the lifestyle. So um, these people like to get together and exchange ideas and, you know, just because they're kind of all in the same boat. Um, uh, so I've gone to those. Uh, I've had many of them come to my cooking classes and so on. But yeah, I met the man himself. Uh, I have been lucky enough to meet uh, several of my doctor heroes. Uh, Dr. Mike Gregor, I saw he was lecturing near Sun Cafe one time and I invited him to brunch and he was very gracious and gave me uh, three hours of his time. I got to ask him all sorts of questions and found out our diets are quite similar. He eats a ton of leafy greens, um, tries to stay you know, away from too much fat, but he you know, will eat whatever is available that's vegan. So, you know, it's like he's not super, super strict. Like um, uh, he, uh, you know, has cheat days, I guess. Okay, so I'm just going to put on the tortillas to warm them up just a little bit. And then, of course, uh, I'm not putting on pico in this or salsa, but uh, I would recommend you put pico or salsa. Pico is very easy to make. You just chop up tomatoes, uh, onions, uh, add lemon and cilantro, uh, and you've got quick, easy uh, pico de gallo. Um, so that's really simple, but super tasty. All right, so. So now we've got nice pliable tortillas. Uh, with a lot of flavor. Um, also, um, you can add, if, if you're not overly worried about the fat, you can add like a chipotle cream or a vegan sour cream or some vegan cheese to this. Um, but these have a lot of flavor just without it. Okay. 
So Ron, you know, you talk about different levels of strictness and I find that the people that I've met or work with that are strict because they completely avoid oil at all costs or salt or sugar or whatever, they're not generally doing it to be difficult, but because they've had some kind of health crisis in their past sure. and they have to. So how can we articulate this to restaurants? Because it is so hard when you're SOS free to eat in restaurants because in general, restaurants use more sugar, oil, and salt than the average person would at home, but they right. tend to find people like me so difficult and would rather not have me come to their restaurants. So right. any suggestions? Oh, goodness. Um, well, you have to learn what most restaurants have in their kitchen and ask for it. Um, so, so unfortunately, you know, you're going to be limited. Um, even at our restaurant, the, the tough one is salt because most of our, uh, you know, most of our uh, sauces and so on are going to have salt in them. Uh, but if you know that a kitchen, for instance, you know, you, you can say just saute without oil, whatever vegetables you have with water or vegetable stock, and then give me balsamic vinegar to make it more interesting or other seasoning. You can, you know, they're going to have almost every seasoning in a kitchen. So, you, you know, if you like cumin, you can say, give me balsamic and cumin or whatever. And you can kind of make your own dish that way, even if they don't have something officially on the menu. Of course, you can do that with um, uh, salads as well. You can order whatever, you know, ingredients you can get from them in a salad. You know, I like to ask for beans on the salad and, you know, so I have a protein source too. Uh, if I don't want oil, I'll just ask for straight balsamic uh, or, um, or you can ask for, you know, like an orange. Uh, it can make a nice dressing, just orange on top of a salad. So, uh, or on top of vegetables. So you can kind of make your own orange sauce that way. Even balsamic and orange would be a nice combo. So you just have to kind of learn what you can grab out of a kitchen that they're, they're going to be pretty easy to get from them. Um, uh, that's my best guess of the easiest way to get oil free. Um, let me show you the apple pie here. So I just got to say, uh, there's so many comments in the chat, but this was a really funny one. Brenda says, I want to win the Nutri Milk because when I grow up, I want to be just like Chef AJ. Well, <laughs> I, 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 thank you. That's adorable. But believe me, my life has been very hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not recently, but, and Liz is saying Chef Ron is so talented. Yes, he is. I couldn't have asked for a better guest on episode 500. I booked four months ahead, so I had no idea who was going to be 500 because a lot of times guests canceled. So it worked out great. And thank you, Nutrimo, oh so much for not just offering so, one machine, but another one at one o'clock. And it's funny, both guests today are named Ron. Go figure. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So there's your apple pie. Um, it slices pretty well. You know, it's not uh, falling all over the plate, and it, you'll be amazed. I think it tastes way better than normal apple pie. To me, the flavor of the apples is way stronger because you haven't cooked them. The cinnamon just enhances them a little bit. The raisins add a little extra sweetness and texture, so that works really well. Um, this is just, you know, it's almost like a, a fajitas without the normal fajita vegetables. We don't, I mean, you could certainly add peppers to this if you like. Um, but just cauliflower is so nutritious for us uh, and mushrooms are always a great uh, flavor enhancer to, uh, if you want that meatiness, uh, that's the easiest way I know to get a meaty flavor if you like that. Uh, mushrooms are just quick and easy to get that uh, umami uh, you know, flavor, that savory flavor. So uh, those are a couple of my ideas. Uh, can I answer any questions for anybody about yeah, this, this or anything this else? Yeah, I gotta just say this, this is hilarious. And I, if I had another machine, I would give the machine just on this comment. And this shows that this young lady who is in my stand-up comedy class must perform. She writes, can I trade my husband in for a Nutra milk? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, hopefully Huppy's worth a little more than the Nutra milk, but maybe not. But yeah, so Ron, you know, I know we talked right before you got on the show and you said you have it, but you're not using it much. I mean, I, I, I have you tried making, you can make raw broth in it. You can make vegetable broth from scraps. Right. Well, we deal with such quantity. It's hard to, I mean, the pot we, we cook broth in is, I think it's a, a 30 gallon. 
you know? So we, we deal in such big numbers. So, you know, we seed 120 people. So we're doing pretty big scale. So it's hard to use something of that size for us, um, except for making butters, which we have done. We've made um, almond butter and peanut butter for cupcakes and stuff like that. So that's what we mostly used it for. Yeah, it does. You know, it makes peanut butter in two minutes, two minutes. Yeah, it's, not, yeah, it's nice and smooth. Yeah, it's a great little device. It's pretty impressive. That's pretty amazing. Uh, other than coming to your restaurant, which we obviously have to be in LA to do, how else can mm -hmm. we support you and your work? I, I don't know if you have a book yet, uh, but you, you do have the classes that people can still buy on your website. They're fabulous. I recently bought one. Well, I'm not doing too much online these days um, uh, as far as classes go. Um, uh, well, the, uh, my, my, my social media, uh, you can go to Vegan Chef Ron on Instagram. Uh, I also have another uh, recipe page called Vegans Food Recipes, Vegans Food Recipes, all one word on Instagram as well. Uh, uh, it's got a big following. It's got about 300,000 followers. And then um, uh, I have a, a YouTube channel that I'm uh, looking to do a lot more with. I haven't done much with lately, but I'm going to be adding a lot more videos on there. Uh, uh, Vegan Chef Ron uh, Russell, uh, I believe is what it is. Um, so you can find me there. Um, that's about all I can think of at the moment. Um, but thanks for checking us out. And when you're in LA, you got to come to Sun Cafe. We actually had, uh, this was funny this week, this woman <laughs> He said, oh, oh, you're Chef Ron. And I said, yeah, yeah. And she said, uh, I own a, a veg restaurant in uh, New Orleans. And um, I follow you all the time and, you know, uh, I'm inspired by you and all that. And uh, she was saying how tough it is in New Orleans to get people to eat healthy because she's health minded and doesn't want to add a bunch of fat. But people there, you know, the heavy you know, fried food and so on. So she's having a hard time, like teaching people to eat a healthier uh, vegan lifestyle. But she says that, um, she does pop ups, too, and she'll get 100 people show up. So that's encouraging that she's getting, you know, a uh, great turnout for uh, a pop up vegan meal. So, you know, I think I think the vegan uh, revolution is happening all over now where it used to be just on the coast. Uh, I think you're seeing a lot more internally throughout America. Um, a lot more people are, are embracing it, even if they're not fully vegan, they're, they're open to having vegan now. It's not like this, you know, uh, alien thing to them. They're, they're open to, to trying it. And there's so many great vegan places. I, I don't know if you saw this, but one of the most famous vegan chefs in New York just made his hardcore meat restaurant 100% vegan coming out of the pandemic. He said he in good conscience could no longer cook uh, meat uh, knowing um, you know, what it's doing to the planet and so on. And it, it's a three Michelin starred restaurant. There's only 125 of them worldwide and he's turning it into a vegan restaurant which is pretty bold of him. Uh, so let's hope that that takes off, uh, but he's, it's great to see like a top chef and even Gordon Ramsay, for gosh sakes, who made fun of vegans forever is now talking about being vegan. I don't know if he fully Are is. Are you kidding? He was so mean to me. He came to the restaurant I was a pastry chef at and when he had one of those makeover shows and I refused to work the whole week because he was just so mean. I, yeah. I was wearing, I had a chef coat at the time. I don't have it because I lost so much weight, but it was really beautiful, handmade tie dye. And he goes, oh, wow. I grew up on your coat. He was just really not nice. Yeah, no, that's, you know, his thing is being, you know, edgy, I guess. But um, yeah, it's so funny. He's defending vegans or left and right. I've seen him make comments like, don't say that about a vegan, you know, you know, they're the future and things like that. I mean, he's really been, you know, standing up for veganism, which is shocking when he was so anti-vegan, uh, as so many of the top chefs have been. So it's encouraging that, you know, even somebody as hardcore as he is, is at least leaning to the vegan side. And in fact, um, a friend of mine, when I was in Vegas, 
said he wanted to go to Hell's Kitchen uh, in front of Caesar's Palace. I was like, mm, I mean, I don't know if I can eat much there. And, and they said, oh, don't worry, they've got a couple things. And I was thinking, okay, they're gonna have like two or three things, you know. They had a whole separate menu, 12 entrees, vegan. Uh, it was amazing, you know. So, so many places are opening up to that and it's exciting to see. And even some of these top chefs are doing a vegan, you know, menu uh, separately. So it's, it's changing very quickly. I mean, you know, I'm sure you recognize this, AJ. The first 35 years we were veg, there was very little movement towards veganism. Now, the last, especially the last five years, it's been meteoric rise. You know, you see all these new products coming out. Every year there's a hundred new vegan products. Even Ralph's uh, supermarkets has their own line of vegan products, not even just carrying vegan products. They have their own whole line of vegan products. It's, it's happening so fast, it's really exciting. That's fantastic. Wow. Well, you know, I wish you would move to the desert because we don't really have it. <laughs> we, we have Chef Tanya, but we don't, you know, I'd love to have like a healthy vegan restaurant here. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, we'll try. <laughs> so when can you move? And if you don't move to the desert, get back on the schedule on booking for fall. Well, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation, Ryan. Thanks, AJ. And the moment you all have been waiting for, the announcement of the winner of the Nutra Milk Machine. And remember, if you didn't win, it's not because we don't love you. There was over almost 600 people watching today, which leads me to believe I need to do more giveaways to get more people to watch. I'm sure we would have had that many for Chef Ron anyway. So another chance to win at 1 p.m. The questions might be different. I can't promise. Just so you know, there was a lot of people monitoring the chat. Nutra Milk representatives have been texting me. And so I, there were so many people that I just wish could win. So I asked them if there could be some runner-up prizes. And um, they're, what they're going to do for three people as runner-ups, and remember, we need you to say to the end because we need to get your email because we have to be able to contact you. Now, please know you have to live in the United States or Canada to win. And Nutra Milk, unfortunately, cannot ship to PO boxes. So if you won, you'll have to ship it to somebody else and tell them it's coming. So um, you can get a $50 discount. That was so nice of somebody for commenting and saying how nice it was for Nutra Milk and that um, they're still offering the $50 discount. But for the three runner up comments, you can, they're gonna give you an additional, they're gonna give you 20% off. So if you decide to purchase, um, they will make an exception and it'll be double that. So it'll be about $100 off. And so I, I just had to give something to Diane Devon for that hilarious comment that she wanted to trade her husband in for a Nutra Milk machine. Uh, I don't want to trade mine in for one, but I could see how some people might think that. I haven't met your husband. Of course, I'm kidding. So, so congratulations for being a runner-up, Diane, Devin. And um, also, if you would like a 20% 20, a 20%, which is double the normal discount, we'd like to offer it to you, Kelly Riley, for your comment of, I would create amazing new recipes to propel my family towards better health. I would make dressings, soup, fruit, ice creams, nut butters, and plant milks. It would help my family be diabetes and that's just a wonderful thing and I know a lot of people had similar um, things and let's see and another person for the 20% off if you would like it is I don't know if it's Dave in CA2 or Dave Inca2 but either way uh, the comment uh, the answer was I want to win one so I can make almond milk without all the preservatives that store broad brands have I would make my own nut milks and nut butters and I wouldn't Make, it would make going plant-based so much easier and it would improve my diet by having less processed food. So thank you so much. So now, dun, da, 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 da. first I need to shit. thank all the people for the super chats. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do 10 things at once, but the winning comment, I'm gonna read the comment first and then I'm gonna tell you why it was selected and then I'm gonna read the name, but of course the person that if they're watching would know that they made the comment. I want to stop consuming emulsifier containing packaged nut milks. I'd make mole sauce, vegan dog foods, nut milks, and gourmet nut butters. I want to improve my family's gut health and reduce waste. So congratulations to Sharon Sterling. You hit so many important points that we had to award it to you, not just wanting to improve your family's health, but their gut health specifically. The way I came to understand the natural milk machine was on a search for improving my own gut health. I was the host last year of the GI Health Summit. And I learned from so many of the doctors, specifically Dr. Janess Laster, who is a plant-based GI doctor, that plant milks 
have these emulsifiers in them. And I was using them because they're convenient and they were fairly inexpensive. And of course they were delicious. And I did not realize that I was compromising my gut health and I wanted another solution and I wanted an easy solution. And that is how I found the natural milk machine. So not only did it help my GI health, but again, when you buy the packages, you're having lots of waste. And what was different about the natural milk machine was that unlike other machines, and I'm not bashing other machines that are much less expensive, is they're making nut water. That's, they're, they're throwing away the important nutrients, the pulp and the fiber, and the nut milk has either zero waste or very low waste, but it's a great food processor too. And I love that you also mentioned that you're gonna use it to make vegan dog food. So, you know, the way to my heart is through the dog. So guys, thank you so much for participating. Uh, Sharon, I hope you're still there, that you can get us your email. Uh, because we need to find a way to award the prize to you. So if anybody knows Sharon Sterling, congratulations. And um, please come back in 45 minutes when I have another wonderful person who's vegan named Ron. He's not a chef, but he's a farmer and a medical doctor. His name is Dr. Ron Weiss. I really appreciate you guys being here today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Ah, Sharon's there. Oh my God, I'm jumping around my kitchen right now. So excited to get my <laughs> nurture milk. I'm so happy. Wait a minute, is Sharon or Sharon the same person because, or did you type the name wrong? But hopefully that was your comment. Oh no, it's Sharon. I don't know what your name is, but is, well, whoever made that comment, um, please get us your email, post it in the-, in the Sharon Sterling. Sharon Sterling. Sharon. I'm sorry I called you Sharon, you typed the name wrong. All right, well, thank you so much Natural Milk for your generosity. This isn't the first time they've done a giveaway of this magnitude. And please check out the machine, even if you didn't win. And I think everybody's a winner just for just to learn how to make an apple pie in 20 minutes that you don't need an oven. Chef Ron, thank you again so much for being part of the 500th episode. Thanks so much, Chef AJ. Uh, my email, if you ever have questions or anything, my name uh, it's Ron, R-O-N, at suncafe.com. Ron at suncafe.com. I'm typing it in and please get on the schedule again before Christmas because we love having you. <laughs> thanks. And thanks all of you for watching the 500th episode of Chef AJ Live. Come back in 45 minutes for the 501st episode where we will be giving away, well, not we, Nutra Milk, another Nutra Milk machine. Take care, everybody, and see you in 45 minutes. Bye bye.